It is, of course, Thanksgiving week. It is a, uh, I'll say, shorter show than usual because I'm not doing a bunch of news topics at the top and all that. We're just going to dive into what's actually happening. The narrative of the week, of course, uh, it is the week before championship week. It is rivalry week, and we've got a lot to, to break down. Let's go on and get into college football week 13, uh, our preview. And, of course, with Chris on the show, I ask him three questions, typically four questions. Uh, we usually do a playoff sleeper. We're not doing that this go-round because we're right here. We, I mean, it, we know who's going to get in. So it's it, one of seven te- or four of seven teams at this point, I believe. But we'll see. We'll see. So no playoff sleeper, but we do have games this weekend to discuss. Parker, I have got multiple games written down. I want you to tell me first, what is your most interesting games of the weekend? Well, I I think you can't talk about Thanksgiving weekend without talking about the egg bowl. Uh, I mean, just the first one I got written down, (laughs) the, the, the sheer possibility for chaos in the egg bowl, uh, one reigns supreme. And then two, I mean, you you got two really good teams and it feels like honestly, Mike Leach has been a little quiet this year relative to last year, certainly. And historically, and they're playing some really good football in Starkville, I think really under the radar. Uh, I think this could not only be fun for the storylines, but this might be an excellent football game, Gary. Yes, I am I am so going to be glued to the TV on Thursday night. I cannot wait to see exactly what happens here because uh, this Mississippi State defense is lights out. And on top of that, the offense, incredibly underrated this year. People have not paid attention to Will Rogers all that much. He's not getting a lot of critical acclaim, of course, throughout the country. Uh, but number 15 in offensive success rate, I mean, number 19 in stuff rate on defense, they are really, really good. It's There is something to be said for Leach having such a small playbook and just getting really, really good at it. Like it, it, Some people overcomplicate this sport, and, and Leach is certainly not one of them. At Lane Kiffin on the other side, how they are 9-2 and two at this point with the numbers that the defense puts up. And the fact that, I mean, they are number 127 in penalties per game, number 122 in penalty yards per game, that is just abysmal. And typically would cost you a lot more games. But this is absolutely chaos between Kiffin and Leach. I'm super excited about that one. Uh, Boise at San Diego State, for me, is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Brady Hoke looks awesome right now. Like, he looks so much younger than when he was the coach at Michigan. He looks like he's having fun. The, the team plays well. The, again, this is another program that just do what you do really well and don't beat yourself. And, and they continue to do it. And yet Boise, you know, lately has been playing really well. Their numbers look good. I don't know what to make of them, but uh, you got a thought on this one. Yeah, uh, one shout-out to uh, Coach Maddox, the uh, defensive coordinator at San Diego State. Man, he's getting a lot of traction, a lot of looks, uh, deservedly so, because they have been putting up some really, really great defensive numbers for for a while now this one's fun uh the stakes aren't as high as maybe we thought they would be at the beginning of the year with Boise kind of stumbling but this one I think I think is a lot of fun and will be some of the highest quality G5 football that we have this weekend for sure yes yes I agree with that uh the only stakes I think in this is whether or not San Diego State actually hosts the Mountain West title game I, I think that's it right. but yeah I'm I'm all excited about that one the other one I've got written down here Wake at BC mainly because I want to see if they just completely fall over themselves, right? There's so much pressure on them right now. They lose this game, and it's either NC State or Clemson that's going to the ACC title game. Wake hadn't been in this position since Jim Grobe was there. What was that, like 2006? I mean, it's a, it a long time. So at, do they just completely lose it at the end of the season, losing three out of four, or... You know, maybe find a way to to get this thing done on the road. I like that one. If you got a you got a different game that that you're pumped about. Yeah, the other one that I have circled is Florida State, Florida, yeah. um, and and not so much for the quality of football, but it does feel like there's a narrative where Florida, uber talented, kind of in shambles right now. They fired Dan Mullen. They are on the decline. And it does feel a little bit like Florida State, better than the record. They've got some things going for them. They're ascending. And so this could be kind of the linchpin in Mike Norvell's Florida State resurgence to to contention. Or it could be a complete derailment for for Mike uh, Norvell that has no ramifications for Florida in the long run whatsoever if Florida wins. So if Florida State can pull off this upset, 
I mean, that that's going to be a huge statement for them going into this offseason. They'll get that bowl eligibility, um, get the extra bowl practices. And so I think that this is a game that's really interesting because you've got a talent gap for sure in favor of Florida, but you have a motivation gap and a stakes gap that entirely favor the underdog here. I am so curious because uh, the the interim coach, what, what is it, guard? I think that's the guy. Either I way. honestly couldn't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> the The interim coach is the same interim coach that took over for Mississippi State when Dan left and led the Bulldogs to an upset win over, you know, a Lamar Jackson Louisville team that nobody saw coming. So, yeah, he, he has a way of getting guys amped up. And I wonder if those Florida players just hated Dan Mullen enough that they end up actually showing up for this. So I am interested in that one. I did have written down, I mean, obviously the big ones, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, but who wants to talk about that? Wisconsin at Minnesota is really interesting to me. I'm, yeah, that one, I mean, we could we could put that under most to lose as well. You know, let's dive into that. Let's talk about the teams with the most to gain. Uh, I wrote down Washington State because in the Apple Cup, obviously they haven't beaten Washington in forever. Uh, but also, you know, it, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that Oregon beats or Oregon State beats Oregon. If that's the case, Washington State wins this and they're going to the Pac-12 title game. I, I don't know when the stakes have been higher for the Cougars, and they don't even have a, a head coach at this point. So, I'm, yeah. I, no, I do think, I think that kid's going to get the uh, the head coaching job if they win this ball game, et cetera, right? They may give it to him anyway. But, uh, yeah, that one I'm, I'm really excited about. You got a, a team with the most to gain? Um, I, I mean, I think it's clearly Michigan here just because they are underdogs and they haven't beaten Ohio State in a long time, and that's kind of the unsexy answer. But, um, Jim Harbaugh said it well, and it's not often that I say Jim Harbaugh quotes seriously without laughing afterwards, but Jim Harbaugh said the playoff starts this weekend. And it's true for Ohio State and for Michigan, the playoff playoff round one is this weekend because it is a win in your end situation here. It, you know, for either of them to get in the playoff, they're going to have to win the next two weeks. And Michigan has kind of been quietly on the fringe. It's been assumed that they are not going to beat Ohio State. They're not going to be playoff contenders, but if they come out and they upset Ohio State and then they can win the Big Ten championship, they could be looking at a two seed in the playoffs. Yes, uh, kind of from out of nowhere. So I think that this this weekend absolutely is is, is the world belongs to Michigan if they can win this game. I uh, I wrote down myself for most to gain because uh, I need a Utah win over Colorado for a lot of different tickets this weekend. <laughs> uh, but I did write down Syracuse because I have heard some rumblings from up there that. If they don't win this game and get to a bowl game, now they're they're playing Pitt, so easier said than done. But I've I've kind of heard some things about Dino and them possibly looking to move on. And this seems like a really really big spot. Uh, so this would be the most to gain for Syria. Now they may not do anything because of the landscape of uh, you know all the coaching hires and whatnot that are going on. But Syracuse at one point was sitting at what five and three or five and four and. Now you're looking at possibly five and seven to end the year. No bowl game. It is improvement over last year, and it's definitely exceeded expectations. But I am I'm curious what's going to happen uh, with the bunch in the Carrier Dome. Now that's that game is actually at Pittsburgh, but yeah, I'm I'm curious about. That. Have you heard anything about that? I, I hadn't. I I mean, I had kind of assumed at the beginning of the year. I think I said that this was the year that Dino was going to wish he was going to take another job. I wonder if Syracuse doesn't feel like the iron is hot for Sean Lewis from Kent State. So maybe they feel like their hand is forced a little bit with um, the, the situation here. Uh, I mean, they beat Boston College by two scores. They, they So they went, I mean, they won two straight. And then, yes, they lost and got murdered at Louisville. And they got murdered at NC State. Both of those are really good teams. Syracuse is not a very good team. And, and I think that they've been way better than expectations this year. Yeah. So that would surprise me. But it's senior day that... Um, they have they have Pittsburgh. It is at the Carrier Dome. It um, is okay, and it's senior yeah. day for them. So who knows? Maybe they can pull off something big. That that that's crazy that there's those high stakes. The only other one I had for for high stakes was uh, Penn State, and not that moral victories matter, but they've had such a roller coaster of a season. James Franklin just signed the big <laughs> extension, and what Mel an extension. Tucker just signed the big extension. And so you've got two dudes who just got locked into their school. I mean, locked, Wait, did, locked did in, Tucker, in college football terms. Did Tucker sign his yet? I don't think he signed his. I think it's offered. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't think he signed that. I think it has been extended to him. It it's is just my, on the desk. 
<laughs> it is my impression that the general public does not hear about offers that have not been accepted. That's, but I don't know. Uh, well, I think, so because that came out the week before the Ohio State game, I think that was actually the administration that was putting that out there like, hey, basically letting the fan base know, if we lose him, it is not because we weren't trying, right? Because if you yeah. get offered the exact same contract between Michigan State and LSU, you're taking LSU. I mean, it's <laughs> it's, it's a better gig. Yeah. But... You know, uh, who, who's to say? The uh, the James Franklin one was very interesting. I was reading up on that earlier, and the all of the language in that, it's basically like a two-year extension because the buyout drops to, what, $6 million after 2023? It's like, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's nothing. So, you know, and it's not crazy money. But what did it end up being, 10 years, $80 million or something like that, if he continues going? But I think it's a smart move yeah. by Penn State. You know, I I don't think there's yeah, any I reason. Yeah, I keep locked up. All that to say, they, they've had a really rough year, and they're seven and four. If they can win this game, get get a, a win against a team that has been ranked and has looked really, really good at times this season, and they can finish eight and four, and eight and four is kind of your floor in a really weird year. I, I think that's just a huge thing for the program, and in terms of bowl positioning, beating Michigan State really helps them uh, locked in there. So I think they have a lot to gain this weekend as well. I think so as well. Teams that have the most to lose, obviously you can toss any of the playoff teams in there if you want to. Cincinnati against East Carolina, that's definitely one of them. Uh, I've got Oregon with the most to lose because you lose this game and you are most likely not even getting to the Pac-12 title game and you might lose your coach. So I now who's to say what Cristobal does? But that one is the biggest one for me because – Good gracious. Uh, could you imagine all the talk, all the hype about Oregon, and you lose two straight to end the season, don't get into the Pac-12 title game, and you lose your coach? be a lot of rebuilding in Eugene if yeah. that were to happen. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, although, have you seen that, uh, you know, that gif that's Woody Harrelson wiping his eyes with money? That's Phil Knight if we're, <laughs> we're getting, you know, tanks out a little bit, so whatever. True. The, the other one, I think you've got to go to the Big 12. I think you say that Oklahoma – and Baylor both have the biggest, the most to lose this weekend because Oklahoma State is in the Big 12 championship game. So they, they're, they're talking playoff implications this weekend. And if they beat Oklahoma and they win against Oklahoma uh, or against Baylor in the Big 12 championship, they really are, are, are sh- should be in the playoff. They're going to have two top 10 wins at the end of the season. But uh, right in the road to end the season, uh, Baylor plays Texas Tech. Baylor needs that tiebreaker. They need Oklahoma State to win. So if Baylor goes and lays an egg against Texas Tech, it's potentially that they could, you know, they, they, they could see Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma for the first time in a long time. And, and, and if they don't come out and, and beat a Texas Tech team that upset Iowa State a couple weeks ago, they could find themselves out. Same thing with Oklahoma. They, they have to win. And I think they're still talking about a playoff shot. I don't think it's likely, but they, they, there's a lot, a lot riding on this. Mike Gundy just got an extension. That's true. And, yep. and this season would be a disaster for Oklahoma if they missed the Big 12 championship game. Oh, after yes. the lead, after the SEC thing, after the expectations, after benching Spencer Rattler, this would be absolute disarray for them. Yeah, you are you were not wrong about that. I'm do you know anything about Jerry Bohannon? Is he is he playing yeah. this weekend? Uh, I don't know that he's going to be 100% this weekend regardless. So I don't know. I, I think that they're doing a little strategy about like they probably don't need him. But uh, I, I haven't seen anything definitive about the severity of the injury. That's, that's what I'm curious about is is what are we going to see out of them? And, you know, are they able to replicate kind of what Oklahoma State was able to do against Donovan Smith last week? Once they got tape on Donovan Smith, everybody kind of figured out, okay, he's only got – this much of the playbook down, we we know exactly what he's going to do. So, you know, I, I would assume that Baylor's defense with Aranda would be able to uh, to handle that. Let's see. You got any more that uh, that have most to lose? I mean, I guess Wisconsin, if they lose this game, they don't even go to the Big Ten title game. That uh, would be deflating after their surge this year, yes. for sure. I mean, I think South Carolina's playing with, I, think, I guess we're going to talk about the game. South Carolina's playing with house money. Yes. And let me tell you, if... If Beamer can do something stupid here and they beat Auburn and Clemson like that could be, I mean, Clemson's probably better than South Carolina for the next five years. And if they can win this game right now, none of that will matter in the future. So I think Clemson here, I mean, again, history is written by the victors. If Clemson goes and drops, you know, 40 on South Carolina and wins and then goes and beats the heck out of an SEC team in a bowl, nobody thinks twice about this season for Clemson. Ah, quarterback issue was kind of bad, whatever. If they lose this, they're struggling in the bowl game. Then you start to talk about, Hey, 
<laughs> quarterback development has not been great. Hey, their offensive line pipeline's not really good. Hey, why is their offense so bad after Jeff Scott left? Like, what's going on here? And and the thread starts unraveling. So I think that Clemson doesn't stand much to gain. It's kind of, you know, kind of like uh, you, you wrestle a girl in high school wrestling. Sometimes, they, you know, they match you up, and it's like that one girl wrestles. Yes. Um, not much to Clemson's gain, kind of but a whole girl. lot to if lose. You, <laughs> if you lose, it's real bad for you. And if you win, okay, you beat a girl. That's, that's kind of what Clemson's in here. That's, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's basically Iron Bowl <clears> this week, right? You know, yeah, whoop de doo you thing. beat Auburn, but at the same time, uh, you lose and uh, it costs you everything. Cost you everything. Although Bama, Bama's still theoretically playing for a playoff spot. So. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. So, yes, I mean, the, the, the win, of course, it's not going to boost your numbers to beat Auburn this week. But it, it will certainly hurt them if you were to lose. So that's yeah. that's the way. I'll tell you this: they are not making the playoff based on what they do this weekend. Like it, it will, it will cost them a playoff if they lose. Uh, but they're not yes. just getting into the playoff if they win. So that's the right. way it goes. Right. Let's let's jump into our weekly college football off the radar pick 'em. And by off the radar, I mean the games that were not discussed on the BetUS College Football Show, which if you have not subscribed, there is a link in the description. Go ahead and knock that out. Uh, the show, of course, brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. You can sign up using the promo code NCAAF2021, get you 125% deposit bonus up to $2,500, and it is sportsbook exclusive. There's a link for that one as well. So go sign up over there at BetUS.com. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at WinningCures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.